Recently, Saudi Arabia appointed its first ambassador to Syria in 12 years, signifying a continued thaw in relations since Syria's regional isolation due to the civil war. This appointment follows Syria's readmission to the 22-member Arab League, from which it had been suspended for over a decade due to President Bashar Assad's violent crackdown on anti-government protesters in 2011. The Arab League initially severed ties with Syria in 2011 after Assad violated an agreement to protect protesters during the Arab Spring. Syria's re-entry into the Arab League indicates a significant shift in regional perspectives, acknowledging the persistence of Assad's government, which contrasts with Western views. In response to the widespread violence and harsh crackdown, Riyadh cut diplomatic ties with Damascus in 2012, followed by other regional nations. However, Assad's ability to maintain power throughout the ongoing civil war exposed the limitations of the Saudi-led effort to isolate Damascus. Consequently, regional states have gradually restored diplomatic relations with Syria, while Western countries have been more hesitant. In line with this decision, flights between Saudi Arabia and Syria resumed in May for the first time in over a decade. A flight carrying 270 pilgrims departed from Syria's capital for Jeddah, marking the first passenger flight between the two countries since services were suspended in 2012. Unlike other Gulf states, the United Arab Emirates was the first regional country to re-establish communication with Damascus, actively encouraging others to do the same. More recently, Jordan and its king, Abdullah II, traditionally a close and reliable US ally, have played a significant role in the plan to normalize relations with Assad. The UAE set an example to facilitate Syria's stabilization of domestic violence and reintegration into diplomatic and regional partnerships. However, Syria's strategic ties to Iran, the Gulf monarchy's main rival, have complicated diplomatic reconciliation between Damascus and Arab countries. The Saudi-Iran détente in March 2023 in Beijing, however, opened new opportunities for diplomacy between Syria and its Arab neighbors. Iran has been a crucial political and military supporter of Assad's government in Syria, as well as the Lebanese Hezbollah group. With significant help from Iran and Russia, Assad's forces have reclaimed much of the rebel-held territory in recent years and now control about two-thirds of Syria. Despite this, Europe and the US show no interest in reconciling with Assad, even as they discreetly approve of Arab states doing so. Indeed, the varying agendas of the different Syrian opposition groups have hindered the formation of a unified platform to engage with international and regional communities and garner support. While Assad's regime has not succeeded in reuniting the country under a single government, Syria's return to the Arab League restored diplomatic ties with neighboring countries and unofficial diplomatic communication with Western countries through mediators signify a significant victory for the Syrian government. This diplomatic shift symbolizes Syria's reintegration into the region, raising hopes that the country could partially return to normalcy with Bashar Assad's continued leadership. Furthermore, this gradual reintegration allows Syria to receive much-needed financial aid and investments. In this context, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, two regional powerhouses, could become key donors for Syria's post-war reconstruction, offering substantial political support to Damascus and enabling it to re-establish diplomatic ties with countries in the region and beyond.